Hello everybody, we are here at University of Oklahoma at the Advanced Radar Research Center and we are going to show you how to do the plating process. That includes titration, electroless plating and electroplating. So, you want, before you start you want to turn the filters on for all of them to circulate the, uh, the contents. Now, for this blue one over here, the filter always stays on, no matter what. We have it plugged in to a USB over here, so that it always stays on. Then, you want to put on the heaters. This one for the Viadep will be set to 125, the one for the Catalyst to 105, and the one for this one to 125. But they are already set. Yes. So, after you turn on the heaters and everything, you'll want to take out this binder. You flip to a new page and write the date and your name on it. This is where you, where you will record the results and how much you will have to add to the blue bath. Also, you'll have to add water to all of the tanks so that they're up to here. And for the blue one, you want to get up to about 19 liters. We use this laser keyboard so that you don't have to contaminate an actual keyboard. So to use the mouse you hit function and the mouse button. Then you can use the mouse. To get to our plating document you go to plating, you open it, bath the maintenance worksheet, and it opens to this worksheet. Alright, so all the steps are written down in these documents, but we're going to show them one by one. The first step is 20 milliliter bath. Use this 10 milliliter, and I recommend you put it on just on the tip. Stop it. And then you put it in the beaker. Then we take it, and with the magnetic stir in, you put it on the stir plate. You flip it on, and it starts to spin. The next step is 10 milliliters of 20% sulfuric acid. We keep that in the acid cabinet. Again, we'll use the same way of getting it out. After triple rinsing, then you go and you clean this off again. The next step is one gram scoop of potassium iodide crystals. We use this measuring scoop which you have to turn on and set zero up. Then you carefully pour the crystals perfectly to one gram. Then you just add it to your mix and it'll start to dissolve. You can speed up the stir at this uh, 
speed up the process of dissolving. Next it says we need 10 milliliters of 10% potassium thiocyanide solution. That is also kept in the solvent cabinet. That the potassium thiocyanate. Now we're going to titrate with sodium thiosulfate that is also kept in the acid cabinet. We pour it into the burette using a funnel and you never want to pour above your eyes. So you make sure you lower it and then we pour. You don't need a lot for this step. So I recommend putting them in the, in the range of the 20s. This one going down is 22.2, or 0.8, sorry, 22.8. You record that value here, typing in 22.8 in the starting volume. And you will put the ending volume there after we titrate for yellow coloration. So first, we put back thiosulfate. Now we titrate. To do that, we just take it out and you slowly pour some in to you get yellow coloration. Now that is yellow. So we stop titrating then and replace the burette. Then we have to add one milliliter liquid starch indicator. We get that from this cabinet. And then from this cabinet, we get a disposable pipette the one milliliter mark right there. Make sure to dispose of this in the biohazard truck tin. And then replace the starch indicator solution in the cabinet. Now, we have to finish titrating this time for a white solution. Again, you want to add very little at a time because the solution changes extremely quickly. You can see it changing to white. A little bit more maybe. There, there it goes. We now have a white solution. So you replace the burette. And measure its volume. I have 26.8. So we go back to the computer. And in finished volume, we enter 26.8. Hit enter. We used four. So we take our pen out and record our result, which is 1.272. And then we have to add 152 milliliters of A and 46 milliliters of C. So now we're going to add 152 milliliters of A and 46 milliliters of C. You get those from our corrosive cabinets. And generally, they go from left to right in the order that we use them. So here's copper 4000A. We'll add about 152 milliliters of that to our copper solution. And you just take this and pour it straight in.
now we're going to add 46 milliliters of copper 4000 C. There we go. Just dump it in straight to the solution again. Now we start titration step number two. And we take another 20 milliliter back. And in this step, we use this smaller beaker for uh, reasons that will become apparent very soon. Now, we need to take out some tape from this cabinet. Electrical tape is preferred, but this will do just fine. And you'll want to tape down the beaker to the stir table. Remaining thiosulfate from the first titration, we have to empty it back out into the bottle. Okay. Now, we get our pH checker from my cabinet. We take it out carefully. And you take this. leaving it straight up and down and stick it into the holder. Then I like to rinse this off a little. And then just go ahead and dry it off. Now you see the reason we put the tape here was to be able to rest the pH meter there. You turn on the stir and everything's begun. Now we titrate for a pH of 10.5 using hydrochloric acid. That is in the acid cabinet. So now you pour the hydrochloric acid into its own burette. Filling this one up a good portion of the way. We got 13.9. Now we titrate for a pH of 10.5. You have to be careful to make sure you don't add too much hydrochloric acid to the mix and go past 10.5. There we, oh, there we go. We got it. Volume of 23.5. We enter that in. We show result is 1.92. Now, you see this is 357, but we made a rule of having a max of 350 milliliters of B being added. Continuing with the same bath that we just did, we take sodium sulfide and add one gram using the <laughs> measuring scoop again. 